Alright, so this week we're going to be skipping our stitch tutorial because we've been working on the Tunisian Afghan sampler blanket. So we've been doing like our 8 by 8 squares, but we're going to skip it this week because we're working on a garment. I know we haven't done any of these for a while. Um, so we're going to be working on a swimsuit cover up. Now this is a very simple pattern and you can adjust it however you want and even create a summer cardigan, uh, which I think I might actually even wear this as a summer cardigan every now and then. Uh, but here's the stitch. So it's a nice open netting stitch which is great for summer or fall or depending on where you live because I mean I live in Florida so I could probably wear this year round but it's really very simple there is no sizing requirement you can make this for kids you can make this for adults you can make this extra small extra large doesn't matter you're just gonna need a measuring tape and you'll be able to make this in any size you want so let's get started with this all right so we're gonna need two different measurements to make this product the first one is going to be your shoulder measurement so here we go we're gonna look like this okay so you're going to measure from one shoulder all the way across to the other and jot that down. For me, that was about 15 inches. Now, you know, you can use whatever measurement you want. I use inches. Uh, so if you use centimeters, you know, jot that down. But this is going to be the width of your panel. So you're going to be making two different panels and we're going to stitch these together. So here it is. So this measures about 15 inches across. All right. So where's my eraser? The second measurement you're gonna need, and this one, sorry, I know I'm not the, the greatest artist here, but this one is going to be the length. So this person needs to be a little taller. There we go. All right, so depending on how high you want to your, and see, and I even made it all super sideways. Here, let's tilt you guys a little bit more. Okay, depending on how long you want your swimsuit cover up to go, um, or I guess if you wanna use this as a, a cardigan or whatever it is depending on the, the length that you want just start measuring from there so if you wanted to go from about your hip so we're gonna go from about here you're gonna measure from your hip to your shoulder and double it that's gonna be the length of your panel now you could also take your measuring tape and just measure all the way around like behind your shoulder and then go all the way back down and measure it that way if you want or just you know from the hip to shoulder double it so um, so jot those down and then we can start crocheting. So let me tilt you back this way. Sorry, I hope, I hope it isn't too loud when I'm moving you guys. All right, so here are our panels. You're gonna need two of these. I think I've already said this, sorry. <laughs> sorry if I have. All right, but as you can see, so here is one. So the width is 15 inches. The length, I didn't even measure it um, with an actual measuring tape. I just kind of draped it over myself and decided how long it was I wanted. And then, you know, I made a second panel to match. But some folks really need the uh, the added, like, you need to have a measurement or you need to have a certain number of rows. So measurement's just a little bit easier. But, you know, if you're lazy and you want to do that like I did, have at it. Okay, so here's your panel. There it is. It's super, super, super long. And then we need a second one. So I highly suggest that you jot down not just the measurement, but also if you are counting your stitches. So... The initial chain is going to be the width of the panel. Um, I stitched, it was what, 46? Yep, so it was 46 stitches across. Um, so I jotted that down so that I made a matching panel on the second one, okay? Um, and then the same for the number of rows. For those of you that like to count rows, just count your number of rows and then compare that to the length as well. All right, so moving on to the materials. Now you can use any yarn you want. I used this one. But I live in the U.S., so this yarn is kind of easy to find. Um, if you live anywhere else, this is a size 3, so it's a lightweight yarn. I used, gosh, I want to say like four of these. I think I used four of these. Um, but uh, the amount is going to vary depending on, you know, how long you want it, how wide you want the, the cover-up. It's a few variables. So, you know, buy a few of these or buy a bit of yarn and then just kind of wing it. Um, but yeah, so here are the yarn details. Again, you can use any yarn you want. I use this one because it's lightweight and this is a summer project. So, um, but yeah, you can use any other cotton yarn of, of choice if, if you have something else that's available to you. Now, in order to make the netting wide, because again, this is a summer project, so I wanted it to be nice and open like this. I used an eight millimeter hook. So it's just a corded eight millimeter hook. This is the Knit Pal hook. I'll put the link down in the description below, but these come in a set. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. I previously made a small sample for the Spanish version of this tutorial, but let's remake this. Um, and while I pull this out, I'll tell you a little about the stitch. 
So it's worked in even multiples, so just chain any even number of stitches, so long as it measures the length of your shoulder length. So for me it was the 15 inches, and I needed about 46 stitches to get there. So you're going to make your chain like so, and if you're a beginner and I'm moving a little bit fast here, I do have a Tunisian Crochet 101 video, I'll link it somewhere like up here, so you can go check that out and uh, learn how to make the slip knot and how to make a chain and a foundation row and all that good stuff. All right, uh, I should probably count these because it needs to be an even number. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I am so glad I counted. Okay, 12. All right, so once you've got your chain, we're gonna begin a foundation row and this is just a regular foundation row. So you're going to skip the first stitch of the chain, go into the second, you're gonna insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and that's it. Go into the next one, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and repeat with all of the stitches of the chain. Once you have cast on all of your stitches, you're just going to work a regular return pass. But here we go, I'm just trying to cast on these last few. There we go. And for the return pass, all you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and pull through this first loop on your hook. And then for the rest of the stitches, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, oop, there we go, and pull through one, two, yarn over, pull through one, two, yarn over, pull through one, two, and you're just going to repeat that until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Uh, let's move fast. Okay, so this stitch is a one row repeat. So this is our foundation row. Eh, I can't speak. That is our foundation row. There we go. Now our first row, we're going to cast on like this. You're going to always skip the first vertical stitch because you already have it on your hook and we're going to work with two vertical stitches at the same time. So we're going to Tunisian simple stitch two together. So you're going to insert your hook behind the top leg of the first vertical stitch and then you're going to repeat this on the second one so that it looks like this. Once you have both of these loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and cast on one like so. You're going to then chain one and we're going to move on. So we need to maintain the same stitch count. So in order to do that, we're going to yarn over. And now see, we have, we use three vertical stitches and we have three loops on our hook. We're going to move on to the next pair of vertical stitches and we're going to Tunisian stitch uh, the two of them to, uh, together. So Tun Tunisian simple stitch two together. These names just get really long for Tunisian crochet. My goodness. All right. So we're going to insert a hook behind the top leg or the front leg of both vertical stitches. You're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and then chain one. So yarn over and go to the next pair of stitches. So try to separate them so you can see them a little bit better. So we Tunisian simple stitch in the first, Tunisian simple stitch in the second, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then chain one. And then you're just going to repeat this until you get to the end of the row. And something that I kept forgetting, <laughs> and I'd have to go back and fix, is at the end, don't forget this last yarn over. I kept forgetting it, and then my work started getting really, really narrow. So I had to go back, gosh, it was several inches actually, that I ended up having to go back because I was like, what is missing? Yeah, this last yarn over. All right, so you've got your last yarn over. You're going to cast on into this final stitch of the row. And you are ready to go. So here's here's your row. Then you're just going to work a regular return pass. So you're going to use this same return pass throughout the entire project. So that's nice and easy. And then once you complete this, you're going to repeat that same row over and over. It is going to look a little bit different, so I'll show you what it looks like here in just a second. So this is what it looks like once you've completed row one. And this is what it's going to look like from here on out. So you're going to do the same thing we just did which is the Tunisian simple stitch two together, but your two stitches are now going to look like this. So here is vertical stitch number two, which is this one, and this one is vertical stitch number three. So you're still gonna just pull the top leg of the first vertical stitch, and then the top leg of the second vertical stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, and then you yarn over. Go to the next pair of stitches, you're going to insert your hook behind the first vertical stitch and then the second vertical stitch like so, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
chain one, and then repeat. So yarn over. I still haven't removed this knot. <laughs> I know you probably saw this, what, like three tutorials ago? Yeah, I should probably remove that. And if not, you know, maybe we'll name it and we'll just keep it there. All right, so we're just gonna repeat this. Once you get to the end of the row, here's the last one. Don't forget that final yarn over and then cast on into the final stitch of the row. And there you go. And then you just complete your return pass. Now, I think I should probably make a, another maybe wider sample um, so you guys can see the stitch a little bit better. But here's the stitch. It looks very nice in the back, which I think you might be able to see it here on the blue. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how it looks. So here's the front of the stitch. Oh yeah, you can see it. Okay, great. And now here's the back of the stitch. So it's really nice. Um, it's, it's not the same on both sides, but it's really nice no matter what side you look at it. So that's pretty cool. So for the bind off, we're gonna use a slip stitch, but we're gonna cast it on kind of similar to what we've been doing for row one. So you're gonna insert your hook behind the first two vertical stitches, like we have been, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna slip stitch. So you're gonna pull this top loop through this bottom loop and pull it through like that, and then just tighten it. Since we still have to maintain stitch count, we're gonna go into this, this little chain space between that second vertical stitch you just cast on and the next one. So right in here, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then slip stitch. So pull this top loop through this bottom loop and then just tighten it. And then you just repeat. So Tunisian simple stitch two together, pull up your loop, and then slip stitch. And then cast on into this chain space and slip stitch. Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, pull up a loop like so, and then slip stitch, cast on into the chain space, slip stitch, and just repeat. So I try to create it, a similar edge to what we had uh, for our initial chain. So it's not exactly like it, but you know, it's pretty close. All right, so once you get to the end, don't forget to cast on into that final stitch of the row, and we're gonna slip stitch there too. And then we're just gonna finish off with a chain to make a small knot at the bottom. You're gonna cut your yarn, and there you go. So count your number of rows again if, it, if you're somebody that needs to count them if not you know you could be lazy like me and just kind of drape it and hold your panel side by side <laughs> so it's up to you this is your project do whatever you want all right so once you have your panels you're going to need both of them and then we're going to sew them together so I'm going to sew them on the back so I'm going to turn this this way so what you're going to do which I'll show you how to do the stitch here in a second but I need to make sure that they're both the same side yep because you don't want to stitch the front side on one and then the back side on the other. So make sure you're looking at the same side. So whether you sew the front side together or the back side, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's the same side. We're going to begin here at the bottom. So line up your corners. And then you're going to fold the panels like you see here in the photo. So you're not going to sew all the way to the center fold. So the center fold is what you saw at the top of the previous photo. You're going to stop stitching at about three inches from that center fold. So begin at the corners and go up to about three inches from that fold or about seven to eight centimeters from the okay, top. So we're gonna thread this through and it's just gonna be the single thread so I'm not gonna double it up and knot it. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna cut a nice long piece. All right, and then to knot it at the bottom, I just wrap it around my finger like this and then twist. But you know, you can use whatever method you want. Okay. So we're going to line these up and oh my gosh, I really hope you can actually see this on this <laughs> with this really dark color. Uh, my swimsuit's navy blue, so I just wanted to have a swimsuit cover up that was kind of similar. So I'm just going to insert my hook, not my hook, my needle here at the bottom most or like the corner most stitch. But because these stitches are really, really wide, you want to make sure that your knot at the end is nice and tight and then you're going to push your needle through some of the fibers like this. 
is there a better way to do this? Uh, perhaps. So, you know, if you have a better way, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. You can go through and uh, knot it a few times if you need to. But once you have this here, we're gonna line up the corners and then we're going to insert our needle into these side stitches. So we're gonna stitch on one side and then the other. So, like so. So we're gonna find the bottom one. You're gonna insert your needle like so, so that it looks like this. And then pull through. And then you're gonna pick up the second panel and I'm gonna leave this really loose just so I can hold it up to the camera and you can see it, but you can tighten it up as you go. We're gonna repeat that here. So go into the bottom stitch and then right into the stitch right above it and pull through. And then pick up this other side. You're gonna insert your needle in that same stitch that you came out of the previous time. So this was the, the bottom, ah, the bottom corner one. So this is stitch number one. Here's stitch number two. We're gonna go back into stitch number two. And you can see my yarn, it comes out of that stitch. So we're gonna insert our needle into that same stitch, go to the one above it. So now this is gonna be stitch number three. Go up and tighten that up. And then let's go into the next one. You're gonna do the same here. So we're gonna find stitch number two. Sorry, I know this side is a little more difficult to see. You're gonna go into stitch number two, pop up on stitch number three, and there you go. And then you're just gonna stitch it this way all the way up to the top until you finish. But notice I'm using, I'm not going into like the one thread, I'm going in so that it's the two side threads here on the side, and then this one. So I know it's not the greatest explanation, but at least you can kind of, you can see what I'm doing here. Anyway, continue stitching this. I'll see you when I finish the panel, and then we'll continue with the rest of the stitching. Ah, what a move. So once you've stitched up the back side, so here are my two front panels, we need to stitch along this side. Now for the armhole, typically for about a small to a medium size, you're gonna leave about seven inches measuring from the top of the shoulder towards the bottom. If you are using or if you're making a larger size, so anything large to extra large, you're going to want either 8 or 9 inches, depending on how wide you want the armhole to be. If you want to try it on before you stitch it, then you can just place the stitch marker just to hold both of these stitches, just pin it closed, and then go try it on and make sure that it is the right measurement for you. If not, you know, adjust it to wherever you need. You're going to do this on both sides, and you're going to stitch just like how we did the back side. You're going to begin here at the bottom corners, and so all the way up to your stitch marker. Once you finish sewing both sides, don't forget to weave in all your pure tail ends and you are set to go. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can always stop by the website where you can find the PDF pattern for this and many other projects, or you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again next week.